my name is Dawn Matthews and welcome to this series on computer hardware. In the previous lesson, you learned that a hard drive is used to store information permanently. You also learned that hard drives are available in different sizes and they can be internal or external. Today we will explore hard drives in more detail. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain how a hard drive works and describe some advantages of a removable hard drive. OK, let's open up the computer case and have a look at the hard drive. So we just unscrew. There it goes. And put it to the side. Right. Do you see that the hard drive rests in one of these bays? It's been screwed in to make sure it's secure. This is important because the inside of the hard drive is very delicate. If the hard drive is damaged, the information on the drive could also be damaged. So, to protect your information, you must keep the hard drive safe. To do this, the drive needs to be plugged into one of these bays and then secured with these tiny screws. Now, do you see these tiny wires coming out the back of the hard drive? What do you think they're for? Well, this is the power supply that connects to the hard drive. Let's look at how power comes into the computer. The main power supply comes through the back of the case over here. As you can see, it goes into the sealed unit. This is the power source for all components inside the case. The tiny cables link from the power source to the hard drive the stiffy drive and other parts of the computer. After all, every component of the computer needs power to run. Look, even the motherboard has a power cable. But now, look at this ribbon-like cable. What do you think it does? Let's think about this for a moment. What do we know about the motherboard? We know that all the components of the computer must connect to the motherboard in some way. So this is the cable that connects the hard drive to the motherboard and carries information from one to the other. It's called an IDE cable. IDE stands for Integrated Drive Electronics. In fact, these cables are often called ribbon cables. When you need to use data that is stored on the hard drive, that data flows from the hard drive through the IDE cable to the motherboard. It then moves through the bus lines of the motherboard to the CPU where it gets processed. The information then gets sent back through the bus lines and the IDE cable to the hard drive for storage. And all this takes less than a second. Now, not all computers have IDE cables. The hard drive and the motherboard can be connected by different cables. IDE is only one kind of cable. You will learn more about different cables and their characteristics in grade 11. Now, back to the hard drive. Let's open up a hard drive and look inside. But before we carry on, remember that if you ever open a hard drive, you will damage it forever, no matter how careful you are. The inside of a hard drive is so sensitive that one tiny speck of dust could damage the drive permanently. Even microscopic particles of dirt, smaller than a grain of salt, could destroy the drive. That's why people who make and repair hard drives should ideally work in a clean room. A clean room is a special laboratory where temperature and humidity levels are carefully controlled. In most clean rooms, the walls and ceilings are made of a special plastic or polymer that doesn't attract dust and clean rooms are ventilated with specially filtered, dust-free air. People who work inside clean rooms must wear special clothing and breathe through masks that take the impurities out of their breath. All this is to make sure that the sensitive technology is not damaged by anything in the air. A clean room is not only used for making hard drives, but also to make processors and other sensitive computer components. In fact, clean rooms are becoming more and more important in computer manufacturing because computer components are getting more and more sensitive all the time. 
there are no clean rooms in South Africa. All our hard drives are imported and have to be returned to the manufacturer if they need to be opened for repair. Let's hear what Intel, a major manufacturer of hardware components, has to say about clean rooms. So clean room is a very important part of Intel's manufacturing uh, process. The clean room is a place where the processors are being manufactured. Uh, each processor um, is, is consisting of a die and uh, the die is um, billions of transistors on a small piece that's as small that you can actually have it on the, on the tip of your finger. Transistors are electronic switches and uh, you switch them on and off by applying circuit in different areas. Now a transistor is very small. It's actually smaller than an influenza or a flu virus. Therefore the smallest part of uh, impurity getting into a clean room can actually damage one of these transistors. Right? Now the effect that it would have, think about the example of having a big boulder landing on the Nelson Mandela Bridge in Johannesburg. It will not only cause disruption with uh, that specific bridge, but also cause traffic disruption in the area around it. Right? In the same way, the smallest part of impurity ending up on the die, in other words a transistor, will not only cause a small portion of the, trans of the processor not to work, but the rest of it as well. And that's why we need an extremely clean environment. A clean room is in general about uh, 10,000 times as clean as a hospital um, operating room. And uh, the people working in the clean rooms also need to wear special suits. Right? We have an example here of um, one of our bunny men and uh, the suits that they need to wear to keep the impurities from entering into the clean room. Uh, the people wearing these bunny suits also have special masks through which they breathe to keep the impurities in their breath even to enter into the clean room. Uh, we don't unfortunately have a clean room in South Africa, um, such as in uh, other parts of the world. Now let's open the hard drive and explore what's inside. Okay, and here we go. Just remove the little screws. This is the base of the hard drive and it holds all the bits and pieces together. This is called a platter. It's where all your information is stored. Platters are the actual disks inside the drive that store the data. The platter has to be super smooth or else the information will not be readable. The platter also has a fine magnetic coating as the data that it stores is magnetized. Platters are often made out of plastic, but newer technology uses glass or ceramic platters. This is because these materials can be made thinner and are better at resisting heat. Most hard drives have at least two platters. The larger the storage capacity of the drive, the more platters there are. Each platter is magnetized on both sides. So a drive with two platters has four sides to store data. When a hard drive is turned on, the platters spin around like a record. Then special heads access data off the spinning disk and make it available for use. These are the read-write heads that we talked about in a previous lesson. Like the name suggests, these little things read data from the platters and write data to them. Usually, only one of the read-write heads is working at a time, either reading or writing data. The space between the platter and the read-write head is so small that even a fingerprint could knock the head off the platter and stop the platter from spinning. Should we take an even closer look? OK. This is an extremely close-up view of the platter's surface. This is where all the information is stored. Now, the information on the drive is stored in a logical way that makes it easy to find. The hard drive is divided into tracks, sectors and clusters. These are important computer words that you need to remember. The best way to explain about tracks, sectors and clusters is to look back at some old technology called records. Many of you will not remember records but when pre-recorded music first came out, it was only available on record, like this. You take the record and put it on a turntable. Then you turn on the decks and place the needle carefully on the record. There you go. 
As the record spins, the needle picks up the signal and sends it through the amplifier to the speakers. Now I want you to look at the actual record itself. Do you see all these lines? And here, can you see that this one is slightly thicker? Well, these lines contain the songs and these thicker lines separate one song from the next. Your hard drive works the same way. It also needs to have the different pieces of information neatly stored and separated from one another. So, the hard drive is divided into tracks that run round the disk. These tracks are then divided into wedges called sectors. And these sectors are divided into smaller units called clusters. Do you remember the stiffy disk which we used to save information in a previous lesson? Well, it also has sectors, tracks and clusters so data can be organized in the same way as on the hard drive. Let's revise what we know about them. External hard drives are also called removable hard drives. They have the same storage capacity as fixed hard drives found inside the computer. External drives are easy to use and connect to a computer like this. You can load information from your computer onto the removable hard drive, then pull out the drive and take it with you. Because they have movable parts, external hard drives must be carried carefully so that information stored on them is not damaged. They're also good for storing old files that are not often used and don't need to stay on the internal hard drive. You would also use a removable hard drive to store large amounts of data. Take games for example. They take up a lot of space and if you have too many games, you will soon fill up your hard drive. Loading all your games onto a removable hard drive means that you can keep your internal hard drive free while still having a portable device that contains all your favorite games. So, next time you want to play, you can plug your removable drive into any computer and your games will be right there, ready for action. Now, are you ready for your task? Draw a diagram that shows the working of the hard drive and describe some situations where a removable hard disk would be useful. Thanks for watching and don't forget to visit our website for more information. Don't miss next time when we'll be talking about add-on cards for your computer. Till then, goodbye. is Dawn Matthews and welcome to the series on computer hardware. In the previous lesson you learned that a hard drive is used. Well this is the power supply that connects to the hard drive. Let's look at how power comes into the computer. The main power supply comes through the back of the case over here. As you can see it goes into the sealed unit. This is the power source for all components inside the case. The tiny cables link from the power source to the hard drive, the stiffy drive. Have a look at the hard drive. So we just unscrew. There it goes. And put it to the side. Right. Do you see that the hard drive rests in one of these bays? It's been screwed in to make sure it's secure. 
This is important because the inside of the hard drive is very delicate, used to store information permanently. You also learn that hard drives are available in different sizes and they can be internal or external. Today we will explore hard drives in more detail. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain how a hard drive works and describe some advantages of a removable hard drive. OK, let's open up the computer case and have... If the hard drive is damaged, the information on the drive could also be damaged. So, to protect your information, you must keep the hard drive safe. To do this, the drive needs to be plugged into one of these bays and then secured with these tiny screws. Now, do you see these tiny wires coming out the back of the hard drive? What do you think they're for?